Susie's. Susie's. I'm sure of it. I still have it here. I'll be in the background, like you know, there's those, DNA like, all over this place. <laughs> That's right. There's DNA all over this office. <laughs> Hey babies, welcome to the Dr. Beauty Podcast hosted by me, Dr. Anna Guanche. I'm so excited you're here. We plan to educate, inspire, and entertain you. This podcast is not just about beauty. It's about lifestyle, inspiration, life hacks, and of course, beauty. Babies, we are here with Eva LaRue, actress, <laughs> philanthropist, talk show host, and just an overall unbelievably gorgeous and fun person. Thank you. <laughs> so excited to have you here. We always have fun. Whenever I come into the office, we always have a blast. <laughs> lots of laughing, lots of gossiping, just gossiping, <laughs> but positive gossip, you know, yeah. guys, <laughs> constructive, good tea spilling. <laughs> yeah. <That's right. laughs> That's right. So Eva and I have known each other for what, about 10 years? Yeah. Yeah. And she's one of my idols because she has this like unbelievable disposition, positive, smiling. Thank you. And it's always there. It's just consistent. I love that about you. Thank you. Um, So there's so many things to talk about with you. Um, Do you want to start with philanthropy or you want to start with travel? Uh, Well, both are super near and dear to my heart. Um, And sometimes they coincide. Mm -hmm. So if I'm traveling, I I drag my daughter around the world with me too. So I, um, if there's something that we can do in that country uh, or in that city or in that town, then we do. So when we went to Cambodia, we spent a few days at an orphanage there and um, all the kids, there was 25 kids there and the kids were all sleeping on these plywood boards that were raised up on bricks, Mm -hmm. raised up off the floor on bricks. And there were like four kids to a plywood board. So wow. we went um, we went to like the nearby market mm-hmm. and we bought 25 beds and then we helped them set them all up and put them all together and we bought them all. So I just Amazing. felt, I feel like it's important, especially if you're traveling with your kids to make sure that, and one of the big things that they're learning always is new culture, new perspective, new surroundings, new um Appreciation. Appreciation because the political situation is different. Um, Everything is different. And uh, so I've always thought that wherever we could, you know, when we went to Africa, we helped build a well and we went to. So I think it's important, you know. Oh, to instill that. To instill that, yeah. I mean, it's you take it to the next level. So when I travel with the kids, I make sure that they see the way different countries are, you know, like the favelas, the, you know, the different areas that you can see that how fortunate we are. Um, And we went to Cuba a few years ago. We could see how different that leadership is from what we're experiencing. And, you know, we even you can't even buy a house. You have to trade houses with someone. You There's no market for housing, if you can imagine. And, right. you know, things like this and people get ration books and they literally have a ration. Um, and so but taking it to the next level like you're doing is to actually, actually really get appreciative. engaged. Yeah. Yeah. And help people. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I just think it's I mean, what's what's important is that they. Um, that, like you said, like they see that as much as we're all complaining about our leadership here, Mm -hmm. whether you're on one side or the other is not the point. It's that we really have it great Mm -hmm. compared to, you know, and, and you can't, you don't know that and you can't feel that in your bones until you go elsewhere and you really see how other people are impacted and 100%. And and how lucky we are to even be able to travel. It's We're lucky that, that we can even get out of our country and go anywhere else. That you're we absolutely go. right. And, you know, I tell, you know, you, you can tell them until you're blue in the face. You can tell anyone anything until you're blue in the face, but until they witness it, experience it hands on. It's it's because we're it's just a concept. Words oh, yeah, don't teach. We're lucky, you know, words yeah. never teach. Yeah. So and you started a I want to say, is there a charity that you um, work with? Yeah, there is one that I really, um, there's, there's several, but one that I really love is called the Tahereh Justice Center. Mm -hmm. And it is a, um, it's a pro bono, um, it's a group of, um, pro bono lawyers that do work for women and girls who've either been sex trafficked into our country (gasps) or they are seeking asylum here in our country based on, on gender based violence. So they're either being, um, they like, um, survivors of female genital mutilation or um, women and girls who have been uh, picked up and, and, and trafficked into gangs. Like, or they're literally considered wives of these 
um, drug lords. Mm -hmm. And if they're able to escape, then, you know, their parents save every, you know, scrounge up every last dime just to get them here. And so um, they are under our American laws actually uh, able to seek asylum based on gender based violence. So oh, they help these women. And and the bottom line is if you try to come here and then all these women are being uh, sex trafficked into the United States from other mm -hmm. countries. And then if they're able to um, escape their traffickers, they can't go back as much as they would love to go home. Yeah, they can't go home because the trafficker is going to go pick them back Catch up again them. or kill their family or kill them. Wow. Or So now they're stuck in a country without their family, for, but they have to stay. Right. Because they'll just be picked up again if they go back. So it's really an incredible organization that I love. And it's. Wow. It's kind of like, yeah. No, giving back is is a, a huge <laughs> passion of mine, and so, uh, but I focus more on <laughs> more on uh, education and more on um, like dermatology foundation, Mel melanoma research foundation, things like that. But uh, this is another level, which um, brings it to an international level. So. Yeah. That's something that I think we do become insular after a while and start to only think about what's going on in our environment. But um, it's something to consider uh, philanthropy that yeah. crosses borders and affects people from all over the world. And I have to tell you, there there are so many things that you have told me over the years that I don't think are super public knowledge or I don't know if they are I mean I'm sure they're they're public knowledge but I don't know that if they're it's widely known hmm. and a couple of those things I just have to point them out because they've been real eye openers for me Tell one me. was and you wrote a paper about it I'm just gonna brag I'm just gonna brag about she's gonna for, brag for a second and she's probably spoken about it but she I don't know for me this was a big deal so <laughs> you told me that there is a skin cancer that's associated with or is exacerbated by um, Viagra. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. And I don't yes. Know, do you think that's very widely known? So some studies uh, do show that um, you can have an 85% higher risk of melanoma if you're a man over 60 that takes Viagra regularly. See, that's a shocking statistic. Yeah, it's pretty shocking. But 85% higher um, is almost double your chances. So it sounds like there's an 85% chance of getting melanoma but it's really doubling your chance which is still significant but it's the in the way it sounds but yes i put that in one of my articles and yeah. you're right it kind of isn't something people are talking no. about at all it's, does it's, anybody know there's that a correlation that's a pretty big you know that's like that's, that's a, a big, big deal that's a big deal that's yeah big so, deal. so spreading awareness is another form of sort of yeah, taking care total. of people public service announcement it's purpose sure. driven yeah, it's purpose driven. It's purpose driven. And so like in that same article, I was talking about um, earlobe creases. Earlobe creases can, if you have one of those folds in your earlobe, do you have one? What? I don't know. Ah, everyone run to the mirror. <laughs> if you have an earlobe what? crease, like a horizontal, uh, I'm sorry, diagonal crease, then you're more likely to have cardiovascular disease and high cholesterol. So uh -oh, that's something. Do I have it? You don't have it? <laughs> but you know what it if, runs in my on my dad's side of the family it does it yeah yeah, yeah no i mean obviously you can stuff. have it without the crease but if you have okay. the crease you should definitely get your cholesterol checked and then also women who have more than uh, i believe 15 dark moles on the left arm are more likely to get breast cancer on so left. yeah on the left arm and this was a that's your huge wow. longitudinal study done and I think it involved like 60,000 people. So longitudinal wow. means as you as you progress, like, you know, they start with you at a certain age and they follow you over the years. Oh, so it's not retrospective, it's forward, forward kind of viewed. And it takes a long time to get that data because you're living with these people years and years. Oh, what yeah. happened? You got diagnosed with this, what happened? You know, and they're just looking for cues on your body and symptoms and things like that. And so what that a cool study isn't that crazy yeah. and a very 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 time consuming and expensive to do those kind of studies. But basically, they found that association. So um, I think the article you were reading was one that's like little known uh, cutaneous manifestations of internal disease. So little known things that you can see on your body that are a signal that you should check for something else. And there was here's the other big one that you gave me, <clears throat> and I wish I'd known this before. But um, so I remember coming into the office and telling you we were talking i was telling you oh i just got on this new plant-based thing from this plant-based company that sends you all these blah 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 mm -hmm. and so i'm taking the um this supplement that you put in your water and mm -hmm. it's the green 
the chlorophyll. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm doing the chlorophyll every day. And it's just so good for your skin and so good for your all your bits. And I don't even know what it's supposed to be good for, but it's supposed to be so good. <laughs> And then you're, and then you said, be careful when you go in the sun. Yeah, you're going to, you're gonna get dark spots. And I was like, what? It's so, <laughs> it's so good, dude. I am still getting rid of dark spots from last year, hmm. and I mean, I was scarred, scarred. I like remember. I picked some pimples, which I own. I can't help myself. <laughs> you're not supposed to I do. No, I'm. I can't believe I'm saying it in front of Dr. Anna, but because I always conceal that from her, but I'm I'm outing myself right now. Anyway, can't for help the listening myself. audience. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> please refrain from picking your pimples. There is never anything good that came from picking pimples. Exactly. <laughs> That's my public service announcement for you. <laughs> And it's so true. Nothing good. Ever, nothing good ever comes from. No, it. they always. You always think it's gonna like go away because you dug at it, and then what happens? Is it just gets worse and yeah. more red, and then it turns brown, and then then I have to fix it for you anyway. At the end. Well, I was taking that chlorophyll while I was picking pimple, and they turned my skin looked like it died. Like it literally turned so dark brown mm -hmm. on the spots that I am still using like fading cream, fading creams, yeah, yeah. almost a year later, and it's still there. And I've never had that before. Do not do chlorophyll drops in your water. Don't do if, if you're brown like me, because I I tend to hyperpigment uh -huh. you know, easily. Easily, yeah. and I mean, I, I'm literally I'm scar like scarred. <laughs> so we can never treat skin types the same, right? Different skin types can handle different things and different skin types react differently. And so that's one of the reasons why you'll never get a dermatologist to tell you exactly which cream one person should use. It really depends on skin type. So yeah. you have that beautiful car caramel colored skin. If you guys are just listening, and you're not watching, you got to check it out on YouTube. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen what Eva LaRue looks like, but she's got stunning, gorgeous caramel colored skin. So Thank of course you. that is the skin that has more natural pigment so that when it gets hyperpigmented, it's really dark. Yeah. And so um, so chlorophyll makes you more sensitive to the sun. It's a photosensitizer. So especially if you love to be out in the sun. Uh, yeah, I always try to keep my face. I try to keep my face out of the sun. She does. Look at her guiltily murmuring. Ah. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, you you were on uh, which soap opera was it? I want to remember all, all my, my children. children. <laughs> yeah, all my children, and it was the show that I grew up watching because my mom watched it when I was a kid, okay. and so then we grew up watching it. And then I got the job when I was about when I was twenty four. Was that like a dream come true? Yeah, it was like this incredible. Oh I was such God. a fan girl the first couple of months I was there. And um, and I moved to New York because I was born and raised here in California. So I moved to New York for 10 years. Yeah. And that's where I met uh, my daughter's dad. Mm -hmm. And he was my love interest on the show. Oh, and John I didn't Callahan. realize that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. I did just, not realize you guys were on that show together. We were. We met on we met there. Or well, actually knew each other before that, but we started working together and then they put us together as love interests on the show. And isn't it funny how people try to say like don't date anyone at work, but then like that's the people that you meet and get to know. So that's the people that that's the person that you probably will you, you know, like my husband's yeah. a doctor, I'm a doctor. We, I was doing research in the orthopedic department, like who are you going to fall in love with? Somebody like else somewhere else? <laughs> it's usually like going to be someone. Did at you work. guys fall? You you guys fell in love in like in? I was a medical doing your student, internship? and he was a uh, uh, no. I was Residency? I was it was before my internship. Oh yeah, I was just twenty two when I met my husband. I was just a baby. Is he older than you? He's ten years older. Oh, Shh, don't tell him. Don't tell the people. <laughs> Yeah, he's 10 years older. I don't know. Yeah, that's no, no big deal. My, that's perfect. My, John was 13 years older than oh, me. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. 10 is perfect. Yeah, I think that's really Between good. 7 and 10 is perfect. Yeah. And when you start getting older than that, then you're not even listening to the same music and stuff. Yeah. It's too much. <laughs> it's too much. You don't have the same references. There's it no more of the same references. It has to be the same music. <laughs> At least. At <Yeah>. least. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, so wait, all my children. So then... Um, you moved to CSI for a long well, Yeah, then I moved home from New York. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And um, uh, I, le I left the show only, well, um, all my children ended up leaving New York, mm -hmm. which was really weird. It had been there for 42 years huh. and came to L.A. because they were trying to, you know, make it cheaper and everything. It ended up going off the air once it moved to LA, which was oh. terrible. But And now everybody's leaving LA. Yeah, now everybody's All leaving LA. All the productions LA. are leaving LA. Yeah. It's crazy. It's just like the 
you know, the taxes are so crazy here and, I have, and they're not making it. Well, you know, I have a lot production. of patients that do acting, but also I have a lot of patients that do our makeup artists and, you know, production people, yeah. lighting editors. You know, there's a lot that obviously goes into these productions and people are going to Canada and uh, Atlanta, Atlanta, a and, big one, Atlanta yeah. and even Louisiana a lot. Louisiana. Uh-huh. They're going there. Yeah. They're moving out all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. I want California to keep all the movies. I mean, there's still hu- there's still hundreds and hundreds of productions. We've got plenty of studio space here that's still full. Yeah. So I mean, no big. It's just that there's so many more um, state, you know, um, places to air. Yeah. You know, there's 500 channels. We definitely needed more space than LA. So I guess it just it all works out. That's true. It's that's fine. true. There's a yeah. uh, now Peacock. There's like more more actually stations and. Streaming and, and streaming and ways to to that need you know venues that need more content. Yeah. So it's yeah. So it makes sense. It's like never ending. But, though, so they moved to. Can you believe it was only was it like only thirty years ago that TV went off at twelve o'clock and you saw snow. Oh my god! And that was on four channels. We didn't even have Fox then. It was, was ABC, NBC, CBS. Oh, I guess it was Fox, but it wasn't CW. So it was just the four networks. Yeah. And it stopped at 12 o'clock. And the the little, they you know, the oh, say can you see would come on with the flag. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you remember yeah, when we were kids? Yeah, yeah, And then there was snow and that was it. And that go was to it. bed. <laughs> and, and if you wanted to watch don't cartoons. Don't stream. Don't go on your TikTok for two hours. That's right. And read. then if you wanted to watch yeah. cartoons, you had to catch not them when they Kindle, were on. Not on your Kindle, by the way. So what is it? You read and not on your Kindle or your That's computer. Right. <laughs> That's right. You can read. Yeah. And like if you were sitting in the back of a car, you could say like, are we there yet? About 25,000 times. Yeah. You didn't have your phone and your social media. Or or a movie you could watch in the back yeah, seat. Yeah, yeah. Watch your Netflix kid. that you downloaded. Yeah. But, you I fought mean, with your brother or sister like everybody else. Yeah, that was the point. The point was to fight with your sibling in the back seat. In the seat back seat of the car. And so push each other. Mom could pull be, pull over and be like, if I have to freaking come back there. Or, or you're- <laughs> this was like before my time. What about before seatbelts even? When you they would, yeah. your parents would turn a corner and you go, shh. All the way <laughs> slide down slide. the seat. Yeah. <laughs> because the seats were covered with plastic. Yeah. Because they were like the plastic was protecting the seat. Well, they also they didn't make the fabric ones really. It was still right. like the leather they made, like, shiny. Shiny stuff. Yeah, you really did. So when you like, turn a corner, everybody <laughs> went sh- accordioning into the one side of the Anyway, that that I think was but right before my time. I think maybe I rode in a couple old cars that were like that, but that was before my time. And but they didn't have car seats for the kids. No car seats. For the babies. Everyone was just they had, around. They had a little basket. Of, so I rem- I, and I remember seeing this at somebody's house. They had like a basket that you put in the front seat and you put your kid in the basket. It wasn't attached to anything. All right. It just it sit just in the back seat. Like, you break like, our right. <laughs> flip. And somehow we made it through somehow. <laughs> we all lived. I don't it. know how we lived. You look at it and you're like, how do we survive? How did anyone survive? I don't know. Because now you have to have a warning on everything. So people will make sure they If don't- you fell off your bike three miles from home, well, that was your problem. You had to figure out how to get home. Yeah. Take your scraped broken. knees. Take your broken up self. Get you your bike. You couldn't call anybody. You couldn't call your mom That's on your right. cell phone. Get your bike tire and limp your ass. <laughs> limp your ass home. And what happens? You should have been more careful. Yeah. You should have been, more, been careful. more careful. And guess what you did too? You did not go down the street on your bike where the bully lived. That's right. You avoided the bully. Yeah. Avoid the bully. Yeah. See, now we don't now have to Now you avoid- can't avoid the bully. There's only guess a cyber bully. Because the bully is in the little handheld in the phone. rectangle that we carry you everywhere. You just block the bully. Like, now you just yeah. block the bully. Yeah. I'm always blocking people. But can you, it was so much easier to have only a bully. Yeah, just one <laughs> just, real bully. Just one. Now it's, yes. yeah. <laughs> that was like oh a, my the God. thousands that was of a trip evil down bullies. Lane. Like, yeah. Sorry. But, wait, we we digress. <laughs> what were we talking about? The guys on this subject. Sorry to bore you about our like. We're, and I remember I when I was in school, we'll I walked walk uphill both, both ways. ways in the snow. <laughs> and it's true, y'all don't know. We did. It's true. It was hard. It was hard. It was hard. <laughs> no, we're not putting this part in because we don't want to sound like <laughs> like you know. The O word. We were little once, yeah, we were little. but I'm just saying, but I'm saying it was only 30 years ago. Yeah, it was only 30 years ago. And 
Like if you wanted to watch something, you had to catch it at that time. Yeah. Like you, and then they came just out like with, if the phone rang at home, you better catch. You the better phone catch call. the phone, or you missed it. Yeah. The yeah, end. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you want to call someone back, crap, wrong I'm number. I'm telling you, what a pain in the butt that was. <laughs> <sighs> Even the the we the, shouldn't put the, this in either. <laughs> Because but then again, it wasn't we, that long ago. It wasn't that long ago. We are forever young. Yeah. Me and Eva, we're we're taking the magic elixir. That's what I. What is? Yeah. What do you attribute your eternal youth and vibrance to? Do you have like secrets you want to tell us? <gasps> secrets. You're one of my big secrets. Um, it's not like a very well kept secret. <laughs> it's on my we always video it, but um. <laughs> <laughs> she's always on my Instagram. On Instagram. I think we but, did a TV thing together a couple times, or at we least did. one time. Well, um, we, we, we did, did it for KTLA. KTLA news thing. Yeah, we thing. did a KTLA yep. thing. We did something else, too. A few years uh, ago. I can't remember. We did... Hmm, I do remember the KTLA thing. But we've been doing a little projects, so she doesn't keep me secret too much. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I really don't. <laughs> I appreciate that. The worst kept secret. I, yeah, the yeah. worst kept secret. Yeah. But anyway, so there's me. And then there's like, what do you attribute all your energy? Do you have like secrets you want to share with us? We want to hear. Um... I well, I try, I feel like I never drink enough water, but I try to drink a lot oh, of boy, water. Oh boy, she's pulling out the drinking water yeah, one. Yeah, I try to, yeah. That's like every water? woman in Hollywood who does Botox and filler, even the ones that I inject are like, I, I just drink a lot of water. <laughs> I get sleep. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Actually, yesterday I, I don't just, drink enough water, so there's that. But yeah, like, I don't yeah. drink enough water, and yesterday I decided to change that. So I had two big bowls of soup for dinner, and I drank a whole glass of water. And then I woke up this morning, drank another glass of water, and it's very inconvenient. It's very inconvenient. It's, gotta, I don't enjoy go water. Pee all the time. Yeah, it's really hard in this jumpsuit. I also do, yeah. How okay, annoying. let's have like a little jumpsuit conversation. I'm just gonna stay dehydrated because, because I went I out to do. in a jumpsuit the other day for dinner. Yeah, and then you find yourself naked on a toilet yes. in a public bathroom with your jumpsuit down around your in like somebody else's. I don't know. It's I'm never yeah, gonna wear a jumpsuit out not, to dinner again. It's not. Yeah, have you ever done that where you like? I know. You're, you, you're like, oh my God, I have to be completely naked. Or sometimes I'm in clinic and I have a jumpsuit on. I decided <laughs> I decided to just hold it. And then by the end of the day, I'm like, because like, I don't have time to take this whole thing off, put this whole thing back on. Yeah. It's a pain in the butt. They seem like they might be convenient. They're cute. They are not. But they're a pain in the booty. And she's wearing a jumpsuit, by the I'm way, if you're just listening. Suit. We're both wearing a but black jumpsuit. I'm going to wait till I get home to go to the bathroom. Do you need to go? So I don't, No. No. I mean, don't I'm good think, right now. whatever you do, don't think about like water running or. I'm kill you. <laughs> Or sprinklers. <laughs> or sprinklers. Don't imagine putting or, your hand in a bath of water. bubbly water. Don't think about... <laughs> Effervescent. Don't think about like <laughs> Whatever you do, don't think about pee. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so rude. In a bathroom I'm so rude. <laughs> okay. So, a few months ago, I was trying to figure out where to go. We were going to go to Croatia. Oh, that's right. And it ended up not working out. But I know you've been to Croatia. Croatia. And you have these. By the way, you guys should follow Eva if you don't already on Instagram. She has the most unbelievable travel I'm on it. photos. At Eva LaRue. At Eva LaRue. At Eva Insta. LaRue. And basically, uh, like, when I saw your pictures of Croatia, I was floored. Like You guys are going to love it. Oh. And I want to go. So she had gave me all this insider information about like which club promoter to, to yeah do, or hotels club. and hotels. islands yeah. and and general managers and yeah yeah yeah. Oh, you're gonna love it when you go. Oh my gosh. I'm so obsessed. do you find traveling is a hobby for you, or is it is it like is it a hobby, or is it? I think it started out as a hobby, and now it's a necessity. Uh huh. It's now it's literally a necessity. I. Well, you just asked, like, how do you, what do you attribute your energy and, um, <clears throat> and, you know, positive outlook on? And it's that, like, whenever I start to feel a little either run down or stuck emotionally uh -huh. or stuck, you know, sort of creatively, travel, and I mean, like, literally, it could be a two day if it's to, you know, Santa Barbara or Santa, if it's, I can only get away like overnight. Right. 
it, it just changes you. my yeah it resets my yeah. create it it, it, I have to get out of wherever I am. Mm-hmm. And now it's almost become compulsive. Although that seems like a negative word. I don't consider it negative because it really jumpstarts my creativity. Yeah. My, it opens up my perspective again. It makes me super grateful again. It makes me really excited about what I might see that I haven't done before. And now I'm all ready to come back, even if it's overnight and yeah. with a whole new perspective. Perspective. Yeah, and yeah. energized. Like yeah. literally energized. I love it. Yeah. So I love it. It's a necessity for me now yeah i've noticed that even if i just get out of town to like laguna beach or yeah. just an hour away laguna. different different scenery whatever and i come back i feel like i feel like i escape like I, the whole departure you yeah. know yeah so it's nice um did you find that over the pandemic you had a hard time traveling or did you just it was persevere? tough i mean no everybody had a hard time going anywhere <laughs> but i during the pandemic you know it was every for everybody it was it was such a a a major toll on all of our mental health Mm -hmm. you know yeah for sure so that's probably when you would have needed it most yeah and and at that time um my daughter and i just had you know major loss after major loss so her dad passed my dad passed my mother-in-law all within um well some within months and uh others within six months it was just one right after the next so the the pandemic, oddly enough, became a backdrop for us. Mm. We were not really aware of right. the pandemic as much as we were just hardcore grieving, like one after the next. Yeah. So, but then the pandemic was happening her senior year. So she didn't, all the other things, you know, she didn't get to graduate, didn't get, <sighs> you know, prom, didn't get all those things. But um, when September of that year rolled around and things were opening up the tiniest bit, mm-hmm. one of the only countries that opened up to the United States was Croatia. Yeah. So I I took the shot and jumped on a plane and I was only going to go for 2 weeks and I called a girlfriend of mine before I left and I said, "Hey, I'm I'm out. I'm like mm-hmm. I'm I'm going to go crazy. Like literally I'm having a nervous breakdown." So Right, I got to get out of here. I'm grieving so hard. I cannot be I can't, you know. And I said I'm going to leave and she she was like, "I'll go with you." And uh, I said I'm, I'm going to go for uh-oh. 2 weeks. And she was like, "Okay." So we get there and after 2 weeks, we both looked at each other and we're like, "Do we have a reason to be home?" Nope. No. Well, let's stay. So we stayed for a month. I we were in it. Croatia for a month. It was amazing. And it it saved me. It really did. Yeah. And it saved me. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. And you know, people went through And Croatia's cheap. So it was is it? doable. Oh my Really? Croatia is A so clean you can eat off the streets, and I'm not even kidding. So in Dubrovnik, which is this like one of the cities you need to see in your lifetime because it's so special. The walls of Dubrovnik are unbelievable and the town is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um it got really decimated during their war. They had a civil war, but um the World Bank helped them rebuild it. It literally looks like like these medieval walls were built yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um so it, it's like this pristine medieval city. And at three o'clock in the morning, every morning, they um ho- they um power hose down the streets mm-hmm. because the streets are made out of white limestone and they are gleaming the next morning. Uh, so I oh mean, God, you literally dream. can eat off the street and the food is fantastic and oh. the water is crystal clear and the people are so nice. They're so house proud. There is even in the, in the poorer communities, it is, it's impeccable. It is, everything looks perfect. I love that word, house proud. Yeah, they're very ha- they're very like country they- proud too. So they're very I love it. Yeah, and and because they don't have any really big hotel chains there yet, mm-hmm. um, it's all these beautiful boutique hotels. A lot of them built in ruins or yeah. part of ruins that, that they've taken over, and um, I mean it is a quarter the price of Paris or or of of France or Italy or any of the big because they've only been a tourist destination for twenty years uh-huh. because they were part of Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. for so long and then they had their civil war and then after that so they're kind of a new country to visit yeah but it's stunning sounds like i'm gonna have to go there next one beautiful place after the next yeah (laughs) i know you told me that you when you when when i saw you you told me how amazing it was but yeah it's incredible it's and the pictures were don't do it by don't do it by ship a lot of people do the cruise version Uh and they just stop into dubrovnik for the day stop into split for the day stop into zadar for the day don't it's just there's too much they are famous so they have the most incredible 
incredible, incredible wines there, but they're mm-hmm. proprietary. They're only grapes grown in their country. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But some of the vines are 2,000 years old because the country is, old. I mean, they've got- It's an old country. Yeah, yeah, it's an old country. And so their wines are amazing, but they don't make enough of it because it's such a small country to export. Uh, so that you could go to one amazing winery after the next. Oh they my have goodness. truffle hunting in the north. They have, if you do it by boat, you'll miss everything. Do you bring pigs with you? They they have dogs, truffle oh, dogs. Oh, oh, truffle yeah. dogs. Yeah, because the pigs. No, pig truffle. Uh, the, yeah. the truffle but the pigs. pigs will eat them. So they have oh, problems oh, oh, trying so to get the truffles away from oh, the pigs. Oh, oh, okay, so they started okay. doing truffle dogs. They're such pigs. I know. Why are you, <laughs> why are you eating all the truffles? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you bring dogs to sniff out the truffles. They, I you see. just go and they have the dogs uh-huh. and then you do it. You you book a trip and do you whatever get to eat your, your truffles. Dog, yeah, whatever you find, you keep. Oh. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm obsessed. Yeah, I love amazing. truffles. Yeah, I do too. One time we went to this fancy restaurant. Provencal. Have you been there? <gasps> no. Here. No. And they had this gigantic truffle. It was the size of like. Oh my God. It must I have been know, a fortune. Like a melon. And then, yes, it was a fortune. <laughs> and then they shaved it all over my oh. God. So you're a bad we ate it all. And I'm low carb, but I made exceptions. You yeah. can make exceptions for things truffles like eat. that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So tell me, out of all the acting roles you've had, which one is your favorite? My favorite. <clears throat> God, it's hard to say because I really loved all my children just for that family, the camaraderie. I feel like I grew up there. Yeah. And um, and then I really loved CSI Miami because um, it was just such a fun set. I mean, you wouldn't think it. Here it's about all this dark subject matter of, you know, death and, you know, all the things. But the cast and the crew were so funny. Really? And so the, it really should have been a comedy. Did you film? <laughs> did you film it in Miami? No, we shot here in L.A. Oh, here in, in Manhattan LA. Beach. Yeah, oh. but we would go once a year at the end of every season. We would go shoot the last episode of every season in Miami. In Miami. Yeah. Oh, it's so hot there. Sometimes, depending on the season, right? Probably yeah. your home. We would end in April, though, so oh, it was okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's perfect. So um, Manhattan Beach. You know, I've never been there. What? I've never been to Manhattan Beach. Really? I was just talking to my friend yesterday. They're like, you have to go. It's the best place. <laughs> so one of these days I'm going to go I mean, there you and could check it out. Hit it in one day. It's like yeah, a right? very it's small. small little town. Yeah. 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 I heard it's like beautiful. It's really pretty. And, yeah. Yeah. It's really pretty. Yeah. Cool. It's a very cool spot. So do you have any projects coming up? So now mm-hmm. I am, uh, my new foray is into producing. So I'm developing a show that like we us. are pitching. Yeah. But maybe a little bit more high level. It's it's just a little, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't have as good a lighting, I'll tell you that. Dude, you so. guys don't know we have like eight lights on us right now. I was just saying, I'm gonna yes. I'm going to light up my whole entryway in my house like this. Just so that everybody I like looks to be good well lit from all walking. angles, yeah. <laughs> and my guests as well. But anyway, so you're producing, yeah. So producing now and develop developing a show. Um, we're producing and pitching right now, and it. I mean, it's got. Is it funny? No, oh. it is just the opposite. Uh, so I'll tell you about it. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's just the opposite, but it's based on a new technology that two friends of mine, <clears throat> ex FBI agents. Um, that it's it's genealogy it's forensics genealogy uh-huh. forensics genetic genealogy to be exact and <clears throat> they are the team that caught the golden state killer yes. after 43 years and the zodiac killer and about 15 other you guys yeah. it's a crazy story i actually yeah. am now having like i'm remembering that she told me this whole premise and i don't yeah. know if she could tell you the whole premise right now yeah. but it's pretty fascinating yeah. how we can use genetic material to track down people. But it doesn't just take genetic material, right? It takes right. someone who cares enough and well, is passionate enough to to get it done, to do it. Well, not right? only that, but the, 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 the really interesting new development in genealogy is that, um, you know, for the longest time we've had CODIS, which mm-hmm. is the national database for DNA. But the right. problem with all of law enforcement using CODIS is that um, the only people in CODIS are people who are already in jail, who mm-hmm. are out on parole, or are a John Doe because they are part of a rape kit that got uploaded into CODIS, but they're looking for a name that doesn't have a name yet. Uh, okay. They're looking for a hit, but they haven't gotten a hit. So you and I are not in CODIS. None of, none, none of us are Even in CODIS. Even if you did 23andMe, you're not in? 
No, you're still not in. Are you sure? Yes, positive. 100. I thought that's how they found the Golden State uh, Killer. Yes and no. So here's what happened. So for for decades, they've used CODIS, but they rarely. They, there's only a 19% hit rate. You, If you're law, law enforcement and you're looking for a bad guy, yeah. you might have all this DNA, but they're only going to they're only gonna get a 19% positive out of CODIS because more than likely your dude's already in jail or he's out on parole or there's no name because he's a ra- he's a serial rapist, but they don't have a name for him yet. They just have his DNA. So, so do we have DNA advent, on everyone who is in jail? <clears throat> yes. We do? Yes. <gasps> but not on anybody else. So if he hasn't been caught for anything, then you're mm-hmm. not going to you're not going to get a hit I in CODIS. See. So with the advent of 23andMe and Ancestry.com and GEDmatch and all these things over only the last five years, suddenly millions and millions of DNA data is going into out into the world. Like, but 23andMe and Ancestry.com do not, sh- they are vaults. They do not share their DNA mm. with anybody else, not even with each other. So law enforcement cannot access at all. Here's where it gets interesting. So <clears throat> if you find a family member in 23andMe, uh-huh. but you don't want to pay the money to go do Ancestry.com and GEDmatch and this and that and whatever, hoping to find family members all over the place. Right. You can download your information. It's yours. Your SNP profile is your SNP profile that yeah. they get from your DNA. And you can upload it into one of three public entities. One is GEDmatch. I can't remember what the other two are. But once you upload it publicly, looking oh, for the then fam- they have access that to law it. enforcement has access to that oh. because you've checked a box saying I want my information to be public because okay. I'm looking for a family member. Oh, okay. So then okay, law enforcement you guys has listening? access to that. This is so very important never, information for yeah. you if you like to know your genealogy. And uh, yeah, and that just to know specifically that don't be afraid to do um, Ancestry or 23andMe because it really is a vault. They do not share your information, period. With However, law if you look for family members, then all your information is uploaded publicly so you that can you can find yourself, the matching yeah. family members. Yeah. But then you go into, I think, 11 databases is what I've heard. Yeah. You become part of you 11. become a public, you know, person, and then they can kind of trace your genes and see who your brother is. And yeah. if your brother's the Golden State Killer, and guess what? You better watch. That out. is how they reverse. Mm-hmm. They did reverse engineering mm-hmm. of the forensics genetic mm-hmm. forensic genetics, and they found a distant cousin, and then they worked backwards. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that was the first time ever they'd used forensics genetic genealogy to catch somebody. Wow. Yeah. And they had all kinds of trial and error trying to get, trying to do it. But um, that's incredible. And that's what, and that subject comes up in your show. Yeah. That and Zodiac and and Killer. And because all of these things have been cold cases for one, that 43 years. Mm -hmm, Another mm -hmm. one was 50. Another one was 25 years. A serial rapist, 15 years. Like they couldn't solve them. They simply couldn't solve them. So this means I won't be cast in your show, which is really sad for me. But. If, if you, you have don't a know, comedy, we if you're need... working, okay, I can be the doctor. Yeah, right. Maybe it has something I'll to do. I'll be serious for a few minutes. While I'm well, the maybe like I can you, do it. Maybe you have DNA on a on a needle that we need or something. Oh, that's know. true. I don't know. Yeah, what if I did someone's injections? And yeah, need... I don't think I'm allowed to give it to you. Oh, oh. unless you have some kind of unless we have a subpoena. Order. Yeah, that's true. Right. Okay. From now on, or I'm saving everybody's. Warrant. But you're probably not saving needles. We're like, oh yes, this no, one was this one was Susie's. I'm sure of it. I still have it here. <laughs> no, we don't have it. Yeah, but no, but I mean, we could figure it we'll out. Find some, we'll some way to do it. Out. Yeah, I'll be in the background, like you there's know, there's DNA those, like, all extras. over this place. <laughs> That's right. There's DNA all over this office. Just look at my needle dispenser or whatever my needle, my sharps container. <laughs> We're gonna find ourselves some DNA. Love. Yeah. So let me ask you a couple things um, for, that I ask every guest. What's your definition of beauty? Hmm. My definition of beauty is. Um, and this is probably the wrong thing to say. Not at all. Yeah. You can say whatever you, know, you want. Um, for uh, Because you make everybody look spectacular on the outside. But I really feel like if if you're not beautiful on the inside, I don't care how stunning you are on the outside. It just doesn't matter. Because 
you you will be you you become instantly unattractive when yes. you open your mouth and you're negative and you're mean not, and you're mean yeah. and you're you know a diva or you're all the things yeah no you know? i hundred percent agree with you and a no. narcissist <laughs> yeah 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 I agree with you one hundred percent so and then is there an inspirational quote that you love yes man this has been a tough one to swallow over the last two years, but it really got me through it. And it's, um, this is not happening to you. It's happening for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because everything that happens, you can learn from, right? So yeah. you either let and it- And as painful as that sometimes is to hear, you're like, what am I, could I possibly be needing to- Learn, learn from, from this. this. <laughs> oh my God. But and do you have to drive some... the point home so hard? Right. Give me... <laughs> okay, right. I'm listening. You have no idea how many times I've said that to God. I'm listening. I get I'm, it. Don't kick me in the teeth. I'm listening. Yeah. So, um, but you know, it's all about that growth trajectory, you know? Yeah. And also trajectory. if you allow it to be. So a lot of it's how it you be. approach things that happen that are bad and difficult that you approach it and receive it as a lesson or as an opportunity to grow. And get super grateful for all the things that are going right. Mm -hmm. Like if I don't wake up in the morning and ju and really before I get out of bed, start to take account for the things yeah. I'm really grateful for. And then also, I mean, the gratitude practice for me has been um, like life altering, mm -hmm. like really life altering. And even when it's really hard and I'm like, <laughs> she's never it's like that. Off. Yeah. But you know, we all have she's those never days like where that, we're like, everything sucks and all sucks. And I'm like, you know, but yeah. I have to be like, all right, reel it in, <laughs> you know, yeah, rewind. Come on. And do, do, do. And, Come on. <laughs> and that's a skill. You train yourself yeah. to turn yourself around. You get up and yeah. you're in a certain mood. You're not going to let it just stay like that. You yeah. actively change yeah. your mood. You actively start focusing on things to appreciate on. Yeah. I do 17 seconds. It's like that Abraham Hicks 17 seconds oh of God, positivity. Oh, totally all on Abraham. Yes, uh, really? and it really makes a difference. Oh, it totally does. It makes a huge difference. And think of, uh, in this country, we have such a, like we talked about, easy way to appreciate everything. Like yeah. you can appreciate your air conditioning. You can appreciate right. your soft sheets. The view out, out of your window. The view the, out the window. Your puppy yeah. dog. Your uh, the, the fact that you have clothes to put on this morning when you get up. And, and if you heard her, um, she has know, a meditation that's literally, Abraham Hicks has this meditation that is literally um, five minutes in the morning uh -huh. before you get out of bed. And it's, this is going to be a really great day. This is a really great uh -huh. day. It is a really great day. She literally says that 57 like she times. It. It's a morning it's rampage. It's a really great day. It's a great it's, day. This is a good day. This is a it's really a good, good day. day. Yeah. <laughs> and it gets gonna, your whole like juices yeah. flowing in the right direction. <laughs> Like, yep, it's a good day. <laughs> yeah. You know which one I listen to every morning is uh, almost every morning while I'm putting my makeup on, I listen to the one that where she says, everything is always working out for me. Yes. And she go, everything is always working out for me. Everything I listen is to always my working makeup out too. for me. Yeah. yeah. And then that, and you're like, you know, even when it seems like it's not working out for me, it's working it's out for me. Out, it's still working out for me. Because yeah. it's true that sometimes things don't work out for you and you think, because oh, that's that, horrible, but there's a reason why. That good thing fell apart, yeah. so a better thing could Another fall together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I love I love that. And then I, I really love when she talks about... Um, um, because you know how she says if you're if 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 you are really focused on whatever it is that you're trying to make happen or whatever thing that you're really right. excited manifesting about have, manifesting or, yeah. or your intention, but if you keep checking on it, you're like, is it there? Is it there yet? <laughs> right. Hello. Is it in there yet? That you know you can't watch the cake, the the cake baking. You just yeah, have you, to kind of give it over to God like, and be like, okay, it's gonna happen, and yeah. that's it. I'm letting go, and it's gonna happen. It's like uh, watching a pot boil or whatever they say. Like, yeah. you watch pot never boils or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just getting. I think that has changed my life, Esther Hicks, and then I also love Eckhart Tolle. Yeah. So a couple things that have changed my perspective in life and the attitude of gratitude for everything just kind of like really sets the tone for um, just uh, allowing good things to come your yeah. way really And honestly. not being afraid to ask for miracles, like not being yeah. afraid to in, you know, in the morning before you get out of bed saying, you know, whatever. And, and then I think, I think now when I ask God for miracles, if I just say, show me whatever miracles you have in store for me today, like, what do you have and what guidance today? Right. Like what, you know, where do you want me to be and what do you want me to be? 
mm-hmm. and to whom today? Yeah. And how can I be be of service today? Yeah. Just show me. And then all of a sudden, I'm more aware of even the tiniest little miracles. And by that, I mean, if I find a parking space at the mall... <laughs> I swear, I consider that. I'm not kidding. I consider that's, that a miracle. And at the time, I'm like, oh, that's right now. I know. I know. <laughs> it could be small miracles, but yeah. suddenly you're really aware of being sprinkled with little like things little all during things, the day. Good things that are going your way. And yeah. it becomes more and more easy to be grateful. It's true. And then yeah. the things that you focus on that are positive amplify in your life. And the things yeah. you focus on that are negative I mean, the things that you try, you know, you learn not to focus on the negative and not to repeat negative stories over and over so that they kind of fade off to be small. Yeah. Whereas the the good things that happen become front and center and bigger. Yeah. You retrain your brain and your brain chemistry, I believe. Yeah. Um, so, and there's all kinds of studies that show that oh, yeah. as you, you know, and like you said, the 17 seconds, mm-hmm. if you can just think positive thoughts for 17 seconds, you start to train your brain to do 18 seconds and yeah, 20 and seconds longer, and yeah. 30 seconds. And, and maybe one and day, day you sustain it all day, which yeah. would be ideal. Ideal. Yeah. So sometimes I I'm wake up, most of the time I naturally wake up happy because I'm lucky. I have a hey. happy disposition. Yeah, you so do. So I can't take you credit do. for it. I think you I love you coming into the office because you always come too. bouncing into the office. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's my Dr. Anna day. <laughs> love. I love my patients. I love my job. But I love making people smile and making them laugh and stuff like that. So I, I am I am happy. So it's not me pushing myself to right, be happy. Right. But sometimes if you're not happy, I do actively try to turn that around. Yeah, me too. And take deep breaths and think about positive things. And I think yeah. that's one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is they can turn it around. They don't have to stew right. like that. And they can f- like switch gears intentionally and be more positive by constantly being aware of the fact when they're going down the drain yeah. with their thinking. I call and, it stinking think thinking. Stinking thinking. And That's I know enough that of that. Stop. Then easy you to say it. that too, yeah. to be like, well, cheer yourself up. And I and I know that that's not easy for everybody. But what yeah. I really loved that she says too is just grab on to the next positive thought. Right. Like don't try to change your whole, you may not be able to change your whole, you know, from a spiral to right. a yay, today is a great day. Um, unless you meditate where you can re-clear your brain mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. get on. But, but you can grab on to the neck to whatever is the next positive thought. Like, okay, you're going through a breakup or something and you're thinking about this person and you can't get them out of your mind. And So instead of trying not to think about that person, which makes you think about that person even more, right. you're going to jump onto the next positive thought and hang right. on to it. So if that is, um, I'm going to find myself a really great pair of jeans today. Right. Where am I going to find those jeans? How if I find like, you know, I don't know, whatever it is. Yeah. Like if I'm going to go get myself a cupcake, what kind of cupcake do I want? Right. What right, do right. I want this? Uh, right? Yeah, no, or, no, a simple thing. It could so, even just be something in front of you. Like, oh, my coffee really, really does taste good. Yeah. And you know I wonder what? where this coffee's from. Is it Colombia? And maybe I'll buy the person you know. behind me a cup of coffee. Because yeah, now like, that really actually changes. Yeah. Because they say one of the things that really changes your brain chemistry is that if you are, if you cannot find your way out of a spiral, mm-hmm. go and do something good for someone for else. For someone else. Because yeah. immediately you're filled, they're filled. Yeah. And you've and you've and you've changed you literally have changed your your brain chemistry. Yeah. Because you instead of focusing on yourself, you're focusing on someone else. And when you're focused on someone else, you can't like perseverate but on your problem. There's an excitement that happens with yeah. that too. There's a real excitement that happens with okay, I know it's only like four dollars or five dollars, but I just bought the person behind me, you know, something at Starbucks and and you're like, Oh, I can't wait till they find out. Mm-hmm, like it, mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. it just it immediately it's a little thing it's but it's a joy spreader it's a joy spreader for spreader. yourself and for the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not a super spreader not a super not a super spreader not a joy what you spreader. guys are thinking yeah. or the other stuff or the other thing you're thinking either no. a joy spreader different well i guess that could well <laughs> <laughs> So just a bad. happiness uh, <laughs> uh, okay so listen we're gonna spin the wheel of guanche what's I that probably sold a concept but i want you to spin this wheel what is it mm-hmm. <gasps> you'll find out what? You'll find there's out. a guanche wheel okay i'm gonna hold this it's a question wheel let's see let's see let's see all right spin it to win it okay <laughs> all right okay Ooh, that was a oh. good spin 
Love it or hate love it. Or hate it. Let's see. Just so you That's know, so Courtney does all my little love it or hate it. So let's see. <laughs> That's so cute. Let's see what she came up with today. Okay. Let's see. Love it or hate it. Okay, love it or hate it. Holiday shopping. Uh, I hate it. Okay, I hate it. Yeah. So I, I have mixed it. feelings about it. I do sometimes love the concept of holiday shopping and the music and the smells. I kind of like it. But then I also feel sometimes it gets to the point where it's a little It's exhausted. overdrive. Yeah. yeah. I don't go to the mall anymore. Yeah. I really online don't. Online shopping. Yeah, I yeah. do all online shopping. If I go to the mall, it's long before Thanksgiving. Oh, really? Because, because, well, because now, even before Organized. Thanksgiving, it's all Christmassy. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'll get a little bit of Christmas cheer before it becomes a free for all. Right. And then I don't want to, because now if you go to the mall, you're probably not going to find whatever it is you're looking yes. for. You're going to find it online. Yeah. Yep. So I don't go if I need to find anything. Okay. I do love the malls down in, um, down in the, you know, the big South Coast Plaza. It's so pretty. Oh yeah. Those are pretty. It's so pretty. It's like an event. You yeah. go there, have lunch. That's yeah, pretty. You do a whole thing. It's super pretty. I do like that. But I, I do feel like they've, it's gotten way out of control now. Yeah. And I, yeah, I guess for in-person shopping, I would be closer to the hated side. Yeah. But. But I do yeah. love sitting on the computer and then, then I and add to cart and add to cart and add to cart. I add That's right. Like, and yeah. things that, and you're like, ooh, she's going to love this. Yeah, she's going to love that. That I love. Yeah. Yeah. I or don't love the holiday love shopping at the mall, but I do like it online. Yeah. Okay. Love it or hate it, social media. I love it because mm -hmm. I um, only, I do it for fun and if it makes me feel good and I block all negativity on it. So there you go. if Same. you come at my, if you come at any of my profiles with negativity, then I just, I, I don't engage. I block. I don't mess around. <laughs> block and delete. Yeah. So block and don't delete. forget to follow Eva LaRue. She's amazing. I love her, um, her social media, but it's at Thank Eva you. LaRue. And uh, I do block and delete easily. I used to like yeah. uh, really ruminate about it and think about, should I do that? Should I not? Is yeah, that me, me blocking out? Should I say this you know back? What? Should I reply? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Um, there's, there's no hater that can even handle the slightest comment against them. They are, make a whole campaign in their life of making people feel miserable, but you say one thing and they're just indignant that yeah. anyone would ever say anything to them. And I wonder how much self-awareness is involved in, in that. None. But, they're hiding behind anonymity. Yeah. They like love that they can just take pot shots like a true bully. You know yeah. what I mean? Yes. Yeah. These are our bullies. Because anyway. imagine if we were, you know, imagine if you were commenting on their work yes. all day. Yeah. And how bad they are at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I don't. I, and what they look like while they're performing it, whatever it is. Yeah. I know? don't engage. I just block yeah, and delete, block either. and delete. I love it. Okay. So tell me, love it or hate it? Um, red carpet events. I love them, but they're nerve wracking. So we went to one last night, um, my daughter and I, and it was the uh, the premiere for a new George Clo Clooney movie that he uh, directed called Tender Bar Tender with Bar. Ben Affleck. It is the most lovely. It's based really? on, a, on a book, on a really beautiful book. And, it, and it's a really beautiful movie. It's a huh. really beautiful movie. Ooh, so, something um, to look forward to, you guys. But man, you guys. did we go through piles of clothes? I mean, there was like a pile. <laughs> of clothes to decide As what you're to gonna decide wear. What we're gonna wear yeah and decide oh, we're gonna yeah oh yeah. my goodness but so, it's fun it's fun it's no, exciting it is fun yeah, it's, it's fun. exciting and you get your hair and makeup done yeah. i love red carpet events yeah and i love I go, it it's fun and any chance i get i go and I, I have a decent number of patients who don't like them oh really uh yeah they're exciting I mean, they like them, but sometimes they're like, especially Too if it's many. like an award show. Oh, they have to go to one right after the next, after the next. Oh, the after. award show. Yeah, award unless season. they're getting an award, they're like, hey. Yeah. Me. Depends. Depends on the person. Depends yeah. on the person. But me, I love them. Okay, what about, okay, one more love it or hate it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> love it or hate it, winged eyeliner. Oh, I do like a little wing. I don't like the big crazy bat uh -huh, wing, uh -huh. but I like a little, a I little like bit. a little flick. Yeah. Flick, flick. I know. I, f I find that when I see other people that have it and it's pretty, it's because they have a certain type of eye that yes. can do it. And mine is not that eye, but I appreciate it in other people. But mine is like the smoky eye type, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think mine's so. like mine too. Okay, spin the wheel again. All I right. hope you get the okay. jelly bean. Oh, yeah. Oh. I do that all the time. Really? I do that all the time. Okay, let me just tell you this, you guys. Okay. 
A lot of times I'll say which one I want you to get, and then that's the one that comes. Really? Z- ask Rob. This is not the first time. That's insane. Wow. Yeah, she's like, babe. Wow. I really want you to get this one, and then they get it. Oh my god! Is that wild? Yeah, because you're honing in. I'm holy. I love honing in. Yeah. Called me. Merp. Okay, so the rules are. By the way, if you can only smell this. Oh, here you go. Smell it. Why'd you make that face and smell like crap? What's? <laughs> okay, so it's an interesting array of smells. So she just spun the wheel, and it said um, jelly bean. Okay. Um, and so, so this is a special game. Uh, with jelly bellies where you spin this little wheel okay and then you pick the jelly bean that looks like the one in the picture okay and and um and i'll tell you more about that later so go ahead and spin okay don't spin spinning you mean okay so you landed on this little purple one and it says oh it's like brownish purple it's either gonna taste like cappuccino or liver and onions get out is that why it's the tray smells interesting I'm so excited. Liver and onions? I'm ready. Oh my God. Ah, she spit it out. Ah, liver and onions. Good. Holy crap, that tastes like crap. Does it taste like liver and onions? Yes. Oh my God. Luckily, works. there's not another one for me to because taste. Because it tastes like mostly like liver. There's only I mean, one like of onions. Each. <laughs> okay, now I have to do one. I can't believe they have that flavor. Is That's funny. Because it's not it's fair part of the I, tour, uh, part of the game. This is part of the game. All right, I'm gonna flick Dude. it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Jelly Belly, you did a good job of making him taste. Now look at her. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> okay, so I spun the wheel and I ended ended up on either it's gonna be juicy pear or a booger. What does a booger taste like? Salty, I guess it maybe. Tastes salty. Okay, which one is it going to be this one? Is it this one? Yes. Okay, there's a lot of those for some reason. It's greenish like a booger. Are you ready? Yeah. I know. I, I think I it's going to be the booger one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, What's it? Is it sweet? It must be the pear then. Is it, it's sweet? It's sweet. Okay. Oh, so it must be pear. So I'm guessing a booger would be salty. You want to do another one? Yeah, I'll do another one. You do another one? All yeah, right, yeah. spin the wheel. Because I can't get this taste out of my mouth, so I need it. <laughs> Let's hope she gets something that gets the taste out of her mouth. What'd you land on? Buttered popcorn or rotten egg. Oh, boy. It's this one right here, my love. Or do you want to do a different one? You want to spin again? Oh, come on. Do that one. Wait, that's not it. It's, oh, that wasn't it? it's this color. Oh. That's that one. one. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> She's sniffing. Popcorn. Oh, it's popcorn. <laughs> she, okay, go. On. Okay. Phew. Thank God, I'm getting that other taste out of so, my mouth. <laughs> okay. Do you need to spin the wheel one more time? Okay. Oh. Love it or hate it. Wait, well, let me do another do one that. since I already did that one. Okay. Oh no! Okay, we already did that. No. Oh, what? 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 No way. Okay, wait. Let's start somewhere else. And then maybe that's why. I can... Beauty hacks. Okay. You have to tell us your beauty hacks. Okay. That's perfect. Beauty hacks. Beauty hacks. Um, beauty. She's um, like, I'm just naturally beautiful. She doesn't need any <laughs> beauty hacks. <laughs> um, well, mm-hmm. I... Um, I mean, I think like an easy beauty hack, like when you're out yeah. and about and you don't have your powder with you, mm-hmm. I think the toilet seat covers in a bathroom are the best blotters. Oh, they're Oil blotting blotters. paper. Yeah, they're like mm-hmm. blotting papers that don't add any, you know, but they're great. So Wow, that's, did you hear that, you guys? That's crazy. I would have never thought of that. But yeah. it does have the same texture as blotting Same paper. texture, and it takes off all huh. the oil without messing with your makeup. And then huh. sometimes I'll fold a little, like I'll tear a little piece of it and stick it in my purse for if I need it for later, if I forgot to bring, you know, because I get super oily in my T-zone. Mm-hmm. And then um, also, if, you know, when you break your favorite powder makeup? Uh-huh. And it happens all the time. Jacked up, and you don't know if you can find it. Yeah. So if you take um, witch hazel uh-huh. and and you you crunch it all, just crunch the whole thing down, uh-huh. but lay it, you know, put it all kind of back in and put witch hazel in it. 
um, and a little bit of alcohol and it'll reconstitute itself when it dries wow. it reconstitutes itself yeah beauty hacks. okay i've heard that so with you don't just, lose your I've favorite heard that powder with just alcohol but i haven't heard it with witch hazel yeah okay so you guys have learned how to re re to make fix your palate yeah and your then palate you've also learned how to up. blot with toilet Seat covers. <laughs> Trying to you think know the what other else? thing that reduces. Definitely don't drink chlorophyll. Don't don't drink chlorophyll. If you get a breakout, don't pick it. Just use miracle cream to spot treat pimples. Yeah. And you know, having oily skin, if you're complaining about it, is not a bad thing. It actually reduces your likelihood of getting wrinkles over time because oily skin is constantly moisturized. But for people that get a lot of mid face shine and for events and things like that, I do what's called Bella Micro Gold. So just micro dosing. Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> Bella Micro Gold is like that. I, if I don't have it every few months, I feel like I'm missing something, and because it's just it 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 is the longest lasting facial you'll ever get because it lasts for like two or three months. Yeah, it's an, it's a skin perfecting like smoothing facial. Yeah, reduces it's like oil getting production. airbrushed. Yeah, it's amazing. I do it all the time too. I myself, it. me and Eva, we're the same. We're <laughs> the same. It. We're the same. We're the same. We're sisters. Same, same, but sisters different. from another misters. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, is there anything else you wanted to share with our listeners? We are everywhere where podcasts can be found. And, you know, right now we are doing really well in Chile and really? Denmark. Really? Yeah, and we're ranked pretty high here in the United States too. Oh my god, for that's being exciting. a brand new podcast, we're at 135 right now. Ranked. That is really exciting. So, and there's a lot of podcasts. I don't know how many. Well, there there's are some in the like world. really good um, in the practical country. information too that I yeah. think you know. We try to do a combination, like so. There's like fun stuff, interesting people, and then we just kind of learn about. Go like today, there. we learned about the whole genetic thing that you just taught us and this is really what i do in my office anyway i talk to my patients like i talk to you and yeah. you've told me some of these things already right yeah and so i'm always talking to people but i can't share any of that information because it's all confidential between oh, me and my true. patients I didn't even think about that so this is a great way to like have a chat with people that are super interesting fun and they're telling you they're like little story secrets yeah that you knows. can yeah. tell our secrets and we can share it with you guys so that's what i love about it and um, I appreciate you coming on. I'm so glad you had me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no problem. That's Thank a wrap, you. babies.